All right, so welcome to the first video out of three that I'll be releasing, explaining to you how this whole system is going to work. I'm going to be shooting for 20% a month and allow you to copy my trades and a copy of that 20% for free. So these videos that I'm going to be releasing, three of them to be exact, will go into categories covering the fundamentals of my strategy and how it works. <clears throat> now, I feel like in order to make a good assessment of an investment vehicle or strategy, it's important to know the basics and the logistics behind it so you can make an educated decision. <clears throat> it's Sometimes we're not presented with enough information, and so we are ha we are forced to go off on a risk or a limb or um, or off of faith in the hope that the decision that we are making is going going to be a good one, even though we don't have a whole lot of control over it. <laughs> so. What I'm going to be presenting today is a video based upon risk. And what you learn here, or what I what, what I talk to you about, hopefully will transfer into all of your investments, not just you know, forex trading or cryptocurrency. And so I'm going to cover a few things, and hopefully this video is not going to be too long, but if you're interested in what I have to offer, and that includes the 20% the a month by copying my strategy through the Forex market, then I suggest that you watch this so you can understand better of how it works and you can make a better decision on if it's something that you want to use in the future, now or in the future. <clears throat> so I have my phone out and uh, with a few notes just to make sure I, I cover uh, everything that's necessary in this video. All right, so why does my strategy work in the long term? And you can see here, let me get my pin out. Sorry for the wait. <laughs> I should have had this ready before. All right, let me move this over to the other side. Let me make sure that you can actually see everything correctly. All right, good. <clears throat> so you see at the beginning and the equity curve and balance curve going all the way up and it's almost a pretty sh very smooth line going up what that means is that it's a very good strategy and it's very profitable <clears throat> some may say that or they will label this as over optimization and that might be something might be a big word for a lot of you guys that are in the crypto world that don't really understand what that actually means and so I'll try to put it into a very simple term it basically means if you can back test a strategy, so if you can test it, test how your strategy and how your trading method would work over a span of 10 years, which are, you're able to do in the Forex market using this specific software, then a lot of people will say that you can optimize it to fit previous price data. <clears throat> so if you know what's ha what's happened, you, you can say like hindsight is 20, 20 right? And if you are aware of that, then you can build a strategy that fits to that market data. It's not an easy thing to do, but it can be done. And a lot of times people say that if you have a strategy like this, then it must include some over-optimization or some optimi optimization in this way. I did not develop this strategy with that in mind. <clears throat> I developed a strategy based on the fundamentals of forex pair personality. So for example, we're looking at the Great British British pound versus the Canadian dollar, right? And that's a pair. And price shows you how the pound reacts to the price of the Canadian dollar and it goes up and down based on what's happening with these two pairs. And the more data that I can 
test on. So go back 10 years. The more I can find out the personality of, of or the limitations um, in the potential future behavior of the pound Canadian dollar. What's the typical behavior of price action and price movement of these of this pair over the course of, of 10 years, for example? <clears throat> and how can I utilize that data to better uh, to make more profit or to minimize losses in the future? So if I can understand a personality better, then I have a be I have a good chance of minimizing those losses in the in the future, because the more data I can collect, the more protected I'm going to be in the future. At least that's my thinking, and that's how I've gone about creating this strategy. The more data I can data I can pull, the better, because then I can get a better uh, idea of what may, and I say may, happen in the future. The markets are ch changing on a daily basis, so it's pretty much impossible to know what will happen in the future. But if I can develop a strategy that works well in the long, in, in over a, a long period of time, then maybe I can also optimize it to be able to adapt to uh, future market behavior in, in market price movement. So it's not just in figuring out what the personality of a pair is when it comes to the, like for example, the pound Canadian dollar. It's also figuring out how to uh, allow my strategy to adapt to future market behavior by using a specific risk management, which I'm going to be getting into now. <clears throat> All right, so you can see the strategy in the equity curve, and it looks quite good. It looks like kind of um, impossible. A lot of people would think that it, that's that's ridiculous. It's just you can't trust those results. And in, even Metatr the MetaTrader software, and I'm not sure if this is being showed. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, you can see it. Right here, control points, very crude method based on nearest uh, less time frame. The results must not be considered. <clears throat> so you might be thinking, well, this is a com complete garbage result then. And you, can't, you can't do anything with this. It's not usable. And the reason why is because I'm using a, uh, I have three choices of testing models and every tick is the most accurate, but it does take the longest. But I've tested both many, many times, compared both. And the only thing that you can't, with this specific strategy, I'm not going to say every strategy is the same, but with this specific strategy, it shows me where the potential losses are and where the general area of, pri uh, of price each trade was closed out. So what this gives me is a very good estimate of what the strategy looks on the equity or, or the curve, the actual balance curve, but I can't consider the actual number itself. So this number, where it says $30 million pretty much uh, of profit from a $3,000 account initially, so it started with $3,000 right here, back in 2007, 824. That's the furthest I can test back on this pair. And <clears throat> it shows me this 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 balance and equity curve, but I can't consider thirty million dollars as a realistic uh, amount of profit over those eleven years of time. Uh, over those eleven years, but what I can consider is where the potential losses are and what I can expect from the strategy. For example, where were the losses? Well, I can point them out here. One loss happened, uh, a loss losing basket of trades. If you don't know what a basket of trades is, I'll get to that in a second. And a loss here. <clears throat> so two losses in the last 11 years. All right. This one might, might look like a loss, but it actually isn't. 
It just was a little bit heavier drawdown. All right, so two losses in 11 years. So now I know that my strategy, and that I can't believe the actual dollar amount, but I can believe that I will have two losses, and that the strategy has had two losses in the last 11 years. So it gives me an idea of what to expect. Now later on, I'll, I can do a, an every tick test to, to show you that the strategy will look pretty much the same. This dollar amount will be different, guarantee it. But you will still see the two losses that happen have happened in this test. Okay, so risk. Now the risk is something that it has to be very calculated. And it's very important to the strategy because if your risk is too high, then you could over risk the strategy and pretty much margin your account. And a margin call means you have too much floating loss and all the trades have to be closed out and you have a realized loss of that amount. So you can only trade with so much risk before it becomes um, a danger to your account. <clears throat> so it's important for me to not over risk the account and uh, so to keep it protected and safe. So I can only push my strategy so far before the risk becomes dangerous. And I'm pushing it, I'll be pushing it to the limits with you guys to, to try to get the 20% each month. But pushing it to the limits means that I will not, that risk and uh, danger is always considered. I won't push it past the point where I feel like it's not safe for people to use. And so 20% expectation on profit each month is about the highest I can push while keeping the strategy safe. Okay, <clears throat> so let me look at my notes. And what's basket trading? Uh, basket and grid trading. Uh, a lot of people have this question. I think it's uh, having to do with Martingale. So I'm gonna I'm going to explain these things, and I'm gonna start picking up the pace a little bit, um, so this video isn't you know forever long. Uh, I should keep an eye on my time. Okay. So basket trading is when you have a group of trades, and you close them out at the same time. Right. So I have four trades here. Right. One, two three, and four, and they're all closed out at the same time. So that is a basket of trades because they were all entered at different times but closed out at the same time. Now what is grid trading? Well, it's, it's similar to basket trading. It means that you enter multiple trades that are entered on a calculated amount or a specific amount. For example, 20. I have my trades entering on a number of 20, and I'll explain to you what that means later on. I don't think it's necessary. I'm trying to minimize the, the data intake so you're not overwhelmed on what I'm explaining here. So a trades that are entered on a specific amount in the market, and that is grid trading. And in this particular case, trade one was entered, and trade two was entered on a specific grid amount. And you can see the distance between these trades are very similar. There's like a, a, a similar spacing between each one. Right? So grid trading and basket trading combination. Now some people are asking, well, you can technically martingale with basket and, and grid trading. And a lot of times people think that basket and grid trading is martingale. And if you look up the term Martin, what Martingale is, actually I should probably just do that right now, you'll see it's a gambling system of continuing, continu continually doubling the stakes in the hope of an eventual win that must yield a net profit. And in the Forex trading world, Martingale is usually considered 
a bad word. Um, and to me, it pretty much is because I have pretty much haven't I haven't been able to find a strategy that works long term using the martingale technique. And it's very it's known in the gambling world, obviously, where you double the risk of each potential trade. So let's t let's take it for a gambling standpoint. Let's say you start with five dollars, and if you're using martingale technique then your next bet will be $10, and then after that it will be 20 So you're doubling it every single... Sorry, I'm having some neck problems. Um, every single trade uh, or, or bet in the gambling world. And it's usually, uh, if you have a big enough bankroll, usually you can come out a winner. Um, but it's the strategy is just not very viable or usable in the Forex world. Uh, unless you are using it with really low risk and still at that point it's too much of a gamble. No pun intended. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> so this is not Martingale. Every trade that I have is the same amount. So if we're using for dollar amount, which I'm going to do for now to minimize um, calculations and to speak to uh, the people that don't understand this market very well, we're going to use $5, $5, $5, $5 on all of these trades. So we're going to use the same risk amount on every single one. In this way, we uh, this kind of technique is a lot less risky than anything that has to do with Martingale. And it's not included in the Martingale world. Um, and what this allows me to do is, if I'm wrong, on the first order, so order number one, and I entered a trade expecting it to go down. If I'm wrong on that, then I enter a second trade looking for that one to give to go down. If that one doesn't go down, the third, and the third one did go down a bit, but not enough for me to close out my tra all my trades in a ba in a profitable basket of trades. The fourth order, number four, did reverse and did move down. And this allowed me to come out with an overall profit once all trades were closed out. So trade number one was a loss. Trade number two was also a small loss. And the reason why you can you can know that is because if it's moving up and it closed on an up slant, that means that it closed in a loss. This one also was slightly up, but it was probably more break e <clears throat> break even than a, than an actual loss. But trade three. And four, we're profitable because we're looking for them to move down, right? So this moved down, this one also moved down, and the profit from trades three and four were higher than trades one and two. So let's say that the loss of trades one was ten was ten dollars, and trade two was five dollars so we're at a loss of fifteen dollars but trades three and four were profits of ten, uh, twenty and thirty so what that gives me is an overall profit of thirty-five right so that's how this whole system works, is we're going off of an overall balance from the majority of trades coming out as positive. All right, so that's how this kind of basket trading techniques, technique works, and it's called the money management uh, part of my strategy. Uh, and again, to clear up, this is not Martingale, and I just want to make sure of that because a lot of people look at that as negative and try to peg my strategy as Martingale, and it's not. All right, low risk per trade. <clears throat> low risk per trade um, is something that I've mentioned to you a little bit so far, um, but I have to make sure that if I'm wrong on the first order, on the first attempt, and I have to get second, third, and fourth attempts, I have to make sure that my risk is low enough so my uh, account can handle multiple orders like this. 
and if it's not, if I'm not risking correctly, then I won't have enough room or enough balance or enough uh, deposit to really handle this uh, uh, too many orders unless they're low risk per trade. So each trade is very low risk, which allows me to uh, try more attempts at, and I say guessing, I'm going to say guessing, guessing where the market will reverse. Because when it comes down to it, the best we can do in the Forex market is educated guesses on what may happen in the future. So you can see that this all that the price moved down here, right? But we didn't know that price was going to move down here by order 4. All we could do is speculate that price has good potential to move down and it did. Okay? Uh, so let's see um, Why is stop, a stop losses necessary? So each trade that I have entered into the market, so each one that you see here, one, two, three, and four, uh, these all have a stop loss put in as a uh, last resort. And this means that every trade that I enter into the market has to have a uh, a safety net. If you, if it, I think that's the best way to put it. If something goes wrong, I need to be able to close out the trade in a loss and move on to the next opportunity. So every trade has this. And it's, it's what I like to call as a safety net to ensure that if a basket of trades, let's use this as an example again, these four trades, happen to continue to go against me, and this goes up and I'm entering more and more trades, eventually I have to get to the point where you know guys, this isn't working out. This basket of trades is taking too long to close out into profit. It's time for me to close out for a realized loss and move on to more profitable opportunities uh, in the market. And that's is it's just something that should be part of everybody's strategy having a safety net in place just in case something goes wrong. Okay, and the last thing I, I wanted to cover, the changing market and the risks involved. So I, I briefly mentioned a little bit on this before, but the, the market is changing on a daily basis. For example, we just had a, a trade that I just had a trade that go, went in right now on my hundred eighteen thousand dollar a managed account, and <clears throat> hindsight's twenty twenty. That's the you know very popular saying, and so we can see what happened with price in the past. It went up, it went down, went up, but we have no idea as traders and analysts what's going to happen from this current point. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? You know, we just don't really have a uh, a vision into what will what will actually happen. But we can make educated guesses on what may happen. And what's happening right now is I have a buy trade in, currently in a little bit of floating loss, and I'm expecting this to move up from here. <clears throat> if it, this doesn't move up from this point, then I'll enter more trades looking for that potential bounce. I'll enter on a grid and using baskets, a basket of trades, looking for that pullback that I expected originally. And if that pullback sometimes will take some time in a, a few trades going down in order for it to finally have that pullback that we were expecting. <clears throat> so if I'm right on this one, that means I'll just have one trade and it will push up, I'll close out and profit, and then move on to the next opportunity. But since the market is changing on a daily basis, my strategy has to be able to adapt 
has to be able to work with what may come. And so that's why I use techniques like basket trading and grid trading with specific risk amount with a, a specific risk amount to help my strategy adapt to what may come. And that's what you see here is that current to the current day it's still able to adapt to the market because of the combination of understanding what the personality of the pairs that I'm trading in this example the pound Canadian dollar and my risk per trade using baskets a basket a basket um, organization of trades and grid trading can help me know how to approach the market in the future I'm never going to be protected completely and that's why I have a safety net using a stop loss in place but because I don't know the future doesn't mean that my strategy will start losing in the future but it doesn't mean that I will continue to win as well that's the big risk with all this guys is the future is unknown but it doesn't matter what strategy you're using the future is always going to be unknown and what I'm telling you here is telling you how I am best preparing for that future in my own way in my own testing and strategy and techniques in the hopes that I can beat continue to in the hopes that I can continue to beat the market in the the future there's no guarantee that will happen but with the tools that I have and I've created I think that my chances are very good alright so that's it for this video the next one will be revolving around uh, the broker and how to work with that situation. I'm actually not sure which video I'll be releasing yet, but I will be releasing three, and then we'll cover each specific uh, a specific part of my strategy. Um, and I hope that you'll tune into that to these videos uh, to better understand my strategy, how it works, and how you can take advantage of it as well. Thanks guys for watching and stay tuned for more Crisos updates as well and I'll see you on the next video.